Hi, and welcome to Cooking with the Gastro Nerd. I'm Julianne. One of my favorite recipes growing up was my great uncle's banana bread. In fact, it was famed for being served in the famous Rainbow Room of New York City. And year after year, I always ask him how he made it, and he would only give me a recipe that called, that called for like 60 pounds of flour and 30 pounds of sugar, and needless to say, I wasn't feeding the restaurant, I just wanted to make one for myself. Finally, after years, of nagging, I got it. So this is my, I'm not really supposed to share this, but this is my great uncle's, with my own little personal touches, famous banana bread recipe. I'm gonna have some very ripe bananas that I'll tell you a little bit more about in a second. We have some eggs, two eggs, um, six tablespoons of melted butter, a quarter cup of plain yogurt, a little, we're gonna about a teaspoon of vanilla, two cups of flour, three-fourths a cup of sugar, half a teaspoon of kosher salt, and three-fourths of a teaspoon of baking soda. And then, of course, we'll add some chocolate chips, because banana bread without chocolate chips, for me, is just not banana bread. Here's the key between any banana bread and awesome banana bread. Do you see how black these bananas are? They would attract a lot of fruit flies if I were outside right now and they're glistening because I just took them out of the freezer. Yes, I defrosted these. I like to let my bananas get so as black as possible, even throw them in a bag in a corner somewhere, and then they're ready. And if I'm not gonna use them right away, throw them in a Ziploc bag and into the freezer, and I pull them out when I need them. And I actually prefer to freeze them first if you can, because they kind of develop this like slimy, um, slimy liquidiness it's like extra sugary and good. I think it's wonderful. So I'm gonna have three bananas, and you'll see how they just like, look at that, look at that. It doesn't even resemble banana anymore. That is like pure sugar. Oh, it is pure banana flavor. In fact, you could just make a sauce with this. It's so good. Um, so, and the best thing is, I always just, whenever I buy a big bunch of bananas, I inevitably don't eat them in time for all of them to be at the, the ripeness that I prefer. So I always have one or two, and I, you know what? And so I save them. And so I have a freezer full of banana, just ready for banana bread. And you can even see there's like banana liqueur. I, that's what I call it, I made that up, but it works. So I'm gonna mash these bananas, just, and because they're so, so ripe, we really have very little mashing to do. Then I have, my two eggs, just scramble them up a little bit. Makes it easier to mix later. There we go, keep on mixing. And six tablespoons of butter. Um, you could put a little bit more, a little bit less, it's not the end of the day. There's different ways to substitute this out. I find six tablespoons does the trick. Quarter cup of plain yogurt. Um, if you want to add banana yogurt, that could add an even more banana flavor. That's a fun idea. Add a teaspoon. Last of my vanilla. That'll do it. And those are all of my wet ingredients. I'm going to make sure they're nice and mixed. This is where all the moisture and flavor is going to really come from for the banana bread. Uh, and it's so important, like I said, that those bananas are right. That is the key. There are two things for a nice moist banana bread. One, that those bananas are the key, and then two, that I don't overwork the batter too much. So now for the dry ingredients, two cups of flour. This is just all purpose flour. I prefer unbleached if possible. Um, King Arthur is a great purveyor of flour if you've ever seen that brand. Now you don't need too much sugar because there's a lot of sugar in here from the bananas. Woo! You make it a mess. It's not baking unless you do. One quarter two quarters, three quarters of a cup. And mind you, whenever you're doing uh, solid measurements like this, it's best to use measuring cups like these. Um, the old measuring cup, it's fine, but this is really ideal for liquid measurements. So, but if you're doing liquid butter, if you're doing water oil, you name it, and this stuff, these guys are much better for the solids like flowers and what have you. Three fourths a teaspoon of baking soda. It's gonna get a little the rise and fluffy. Half a teaspoon kosher salt. Salt is so important, like I said, whether it's sweet or savory, it helps really bring out all those flavors and season 
a dish. So always remember your salt when you're even when you're baking. And then a little trick, and I don't put a lot in. I like just a little pinch of cinnamon. Just a little bit. You probably won't even really taste it that much, but I think it gives it that something, that little extra that people like, hmm, the je ne sais quoi. And then just mix it all together. I love using a whisk for this. I don't really find you need to sift the flowers or the sugar. Like I said, nothing too fancy. And just make sure that you can, cinnamon's a great way to gauge how well you've mixed it all in. If you don't, if you kind of brush the bottom and you don't see anything, you're good to go. And last but not least, we mix. So I have my nice, it's kind of, it's a little clumpy, you'll see. It's not a big deal. Um, the one thing you want to make sure that it's not like eggs being clumpy if it's a little, this is all going to kind of cook off and it's going to give off its moisture. I like big clumps of banana, it's fine. So I'm going to put the wet and dry. And then I'm going to slowly start to fold these ingredients together. And the real key here is not to overwork it. And the problem I found is sometimes when I want to do a double batch, in the process, of, I end up overworking it because it's just more to mix. So this is one thing I do not recommend you do in double batches or scale to be larger. Keep it to this size. And as it's coming together, I'm gonna throw in some chocolate chip. I don't really eyeball this. It's maybe about a cup, two cups. You can of course put a very common pairing for banana bread is with walnuts or toasted pecans. That's delicious. I, um, you know, I like to keep it simple. I just do chocolate chips. And of course, you don't have to put chocolate chips. You just can't you don't need them in banana bread. They just pop. I think bananas and chocolate just go so well together. And the fun thing about this dish, this recipe rather, is in addition to putting it in like a, a baking mold, you can make cupcakes or muffins out of them. I guess the difference between a cupcake and a muffin is icing in this case. Um, but these are great for banana muffins. Now people say to grease with Crisco, with butter, you can rub it, sure. I think this is this is a trick I learned in culinary school. It's so easy. Little cooking spray, Pam, what have you. Just kind of get in the insides. Flour. And just work your way around. Wasn't that quicker than rubbing it with butter? There you go. Oh yeah. My mom would be yelling at me right now if she were here saying, more chips, needs more chocolate. And now this is kind of a, this is actually meant for um, bread. It's great for bread, like kind of your white loaf, but any kind of loaf pan will do. This is gonna rise beautifully. I'm gonna pop these in the oven at 350, just preheated to 350, and right in the middle. After 55 minutes, five, five minutes, I took the banana there out of the oven, and I just tested it. This is a good old cake tester. And you literally just, whoop. And when it comes out clean, you know you're good to go. Sometimes some chocolate will be on there, but that's okay. And just test it in maybe a few spots, just in case. Um, and that's it. Let it cool. I flipped it out because it was nice and greased well. Came right out. Now it's time to enjoy. So I'm gonna cut myself a nice big slice. And I love, oh, look at that. Lots of layers of chocolate. You can see the different layers of banana. So moist. I love that color. I love that speckled color of the banana bread. You can tell just how moist it's gonna be. Mmm. Mmm. It's a little bit white. Okay. This, on its own, you can put a little Nutella or jam, you name it. Wrap it up, it'll stay for over a week. Such a great snack to have on hand. Great for breakfast, even great for dessert. Don't tell anyone, I shared my Uncle Ben's very, very private recipe. I'll get you in trouble. Anyway, enjoy it, go make it. Thank you for tuning in to The Gastro Nerd. I'm Julianne Fader, and stay tuned for more delicious nerdiness to come.